Hello, I'm the Beauty Professor, and you can find my beauty blog at beautyprofessor.com. It has been a month, and what a month it has been. In this last month, we closed escrow on a house, packed everything up, moved in on July 4th, have been unpacking boxes like crazy since then. I've had a ton of beauty deadlines. Joey's first birthday was last weekend. My brother's getting married this weekend. Oh my gracious. I closed out an online class I was teaching this summer. I just turned in final grades yesterday. It's been bananas, but all good and we're so grateful. This is actually the first video from our new house and things are coming together. We still have lots to do, but day by day, that's how I've been living. And today I'm going to be doing a tutorial for a summer look that has been a go-to for me using products that have really performed well in this extra hot heat we're having in July. Joey is now one. Say hello. <laughs> she's such a joy. She's talking, she's got hey. teeth, she's eating solid food. She's definitely a little person and we couldn't feel more blessed. <laughs> On a side note, Jethro is really healing. His ACL blew out a couple of months ago and I'm happy to say he's walking around great now. So for those of you who've asked me, thank you so much. Up front, I'm just gonna let you guys know for this tutorial, for this look right here, which has been my go-to summer look so far in the last month, you will have some noise. Dear Joey is playing right behind me. She's definitely in an attached phase, which is sweet <laughs> and something I'm working through at the same time. So she needs to be able to see me right now while I film and she's vocal, which is amazing, but definitely there'll be some ambient noise. So I hope you bear with me and you enjoy it. That's how I'm treating it. To prep my skin for this easy summer look, I go ahead and apply a pump of the Augustina Spotter, the Rich Cream, directly upon cleansing in the morning. And I find that a single pump gives me great moisture. It's got anti-aging benefits, and truly, I've said this countless times in videos and in blog posts, my skin has never been better since using this for well over a year and a half. I apply the Clé de Peau Enhancing Eye Contour Cream Supreme. This has been my go-to eye cream for quite a while now. And I just use my ring finger to lightly tap in the orbital region. It's already on my eyes or I would be demonstrating. Next, and I've already done this as well, I just very haphazardly apply the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter, kind of like around the center of my face like this, directly from the wand. And then I blend it out, not with a beauty blender, but with my fingers, almost like a second cream. And I just rub it in. It gives my skin a nice glow. It evens things out, even before foundation. And I find that it even increases the longevity of my foundation performance. Finally, before jumping into foundation, I apply sunscreen. And I've been working lately with the Super Goop Zinc sunscreen. It's 100% mineral. It's got a very light tint, but I think it is designed to work with all skin types and depths. So I just go ahead and distribute it all over my face. I love the fact that it is mineral. There are no chemicals involved. And I feel like it just prepares my canvas for everything else to come. Of course, also giving me some strong SPF 40 sun protection. Okay, now that skin is completely prepped, I'm going to move into foundation. Now, the foundation I've been reaching for so frequently in the last, gosh, three to four weeks since this escrow closed and the move has been the Westman Atelier Vital Skin Foundation Stick. I've talked about this before. I wear it in shade seven, VII, and I find that this is a spot on match for my summer skin right now. I don't have as much of a tan as I often can have because I've just been cooped up inside <sighs> unpacking and organizing all for good, but gracious, it's not giving me a lot of outdoor time. So this is a great match for me right now. And I just apply it like this. I know that Gucci Westman, I've seen demonstrations of the way she applies it and she kind of just like spot applies it. I like this like light to medium coverage all over my face. So I start with apply application just like this. You okay? Good. All right, and then I'm using my pre-dampened beauty blender to distribute it. You can see that it just offers beautiful evening power. And once it sets in, in about 30 seconds, it really does just look like real skin. Very even, 
healthy real skin, but I wouldn't call it a satin finish or a matte finish. It's just kind of like a natural skin finish that just looks lovelier as the day goes on. Now, even though this foundation matches my face perfectly, I do know that my neck is a lot wider. I'm never laying out like this, so certainly just the overhang of my chin is going to prevent my neck from getting as much sunlight as maybe my shoulders or my chest would even if I was wearing a top that had that part open. So that being said, I make sure to really liberally blend through here. I don't want a line of demarcation, and as long as I'm focused on blending, Thoroughly, I don't get one. For concealer, I am going to apply the Sisley Under Eye Concealer in shade number two. This is so good for darker circles, lack of sleep. We have been sleeping with a broken air conditioner that's hopefully getting fixed in a couple of days. Erstwhile, it's like 90 degrees upstairs. Heat rises, you know. So I have more darkness in my orbital region than I prefer. This has got a cooling tip applicator, so it actually feels, from a sensory perspective, really nice when you're applying. And then I'll go ahead and use my same beauty blender to buff it out. Just kind of lightly patting. It is brighter, of course, in depth and tone than the foundation, but over a couple of minutes, I find that it's kind of a seamless finish color-wise between the two. Let's buff it out. And it does have Skincare benefits as well, so not only am I treating my skin on the topical region to brighten things up, but it's also working from underneath the skin to brighten things up on a cellular level. All right, so concealer for the rest of my face, not particularly necessary because this Westman Atelier gives great coverage and my skin's behaving itself for the most part. But I am going to go in with a preloaded lip brush that I bought years ago. It's got the Laura Mercier Secret Camouflage in SC3. And I'll just kind of tap it on anything that I think needs a little bit of refining. I don't know about you, but I always have one or two little areas that I definitely want to put a more stalwart concealer on. Done. All right, so on to my bronzer hack right now. I have been saving so much time by using this diminutive little product. This is the Natasha Denona Bronze and Glow Mini. It has the bronzer that's also in the bronze and glow palette, as well as one of the highlighters. It doesn't have the other two highlighters, obviously, but I find that this pairing works so well for a day-to-day -day look. So I'm using my Surratt Artistic Cheek Brush, always, putting some of the bronzer on my brush and then bringing it through my cheeks. This is a slightly reddish, almost blush-like bronzer, but so good for a single wash of color. I put it obviously in the hollows of my cheeks, the perimeters of my face, and I'll bring a little bit more into my cheek area here, and down my nose for some continuity. You can see already, it warms up the face, it gently sculpts, it does deliver a bronze effect, but you also can kind of forego any kind of deeper blush because of the tone of this bronzer. Then I'll use the same brush, all about time saving here, and I'm going to bring the highlight through the center of my forehead, quickly down my nose, focus some more on the apples of my cheeks, or actually the high points of my cheeks here. Chin, a little bit of the cupid's bow. This highlight is so pretty. It's very reflective. It almost has like a wet effect, but it certainly is a powder. So you have longevity and staying power and the face just gets better as the day goes on. I kid you not. Humidity, heat, your skin looks better with this duo as it, as it wears on. So it's not going to separate or get patchy or weird. It just stays in place all day. Brilliant. Such a good investment. On to brows and eyes. So I still use the Tom Ford Fiber Brow Gel in Chestnut. Daily is my brow go-to. So I just sweep it through my brows. I'm very appreciative of the low maintenance brow result you get from this. It looks like you spent more time than you actually did. Certainly single product. And I like to make sure I'm brushing my brows upward to enhance fullness. 
and the brow gel does the rest for me. It deposits color, it even has some fibers to beef things up, and best of all, it lasts all day. No flaking, just stays in place. You okay? You silly. Joey has learned to fake cough. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying that the last cough wasn't real, but now she's fake coughing. Hello. <laughs> it's it's playful. Does anyone else's baby do this? She's a card. She's hilarious. Okay. For eyeshadow, I'm working with a brand new formula. I've been talking about it since prior to its launch because I was able to get a sneak peek of it. And now I can't wait to show you guys this formula in action. This is the Kosas 10 Second Eyeshadow. And I'm going to be using the shade Copper Halo and Supreme to create a really warm, neutral eye that stays in place all day. These shadows are very liquid, so you want to shake them up to distribute the pigments evenly. And then you can apply them directly from the doe foot applicator, but they're designed to then, within 10 seconds or so, have your fingers blend them out. They start sheer, like a wash of color but then can be built upon for more opacity, more color impact. But you can see, this is just like a single application. But I'm already getting a good amount of color payoff here. Once again, this is Copper Halo. Yes, Joey. Hello. And I'm bringing this upward. Then I'm gonna go in with the gold shade Supreme. And like, even though I can get away with applying these just with my finger, I'll use a brush to go over everything once again and I'm gonna clean up any edges. And I'm gonna put this here in the center of my eye. It's a pure gold, where of course Copper Halo is more copper bronzy with a depth. Sound effects courtesy of Joey. <laughs> okay, you can see already the result of these beautiful eyeshadows. They are great for somebody on the go. I can completely relate to that. They travel well. I can toss them on my makeup bag and they'll stay secure. And they come in a wealth of colors. I will have everything swatched for you. I'll insert it into the video and also share it on my blog. I've actually decided to add a bit more of the Copper Halo to my lower lash line, I love to do that, and I'm going to use a brush for that just to get a little bit more precision in terms of application. Just sweeping it along here, like so, and it's just gonna add, okay, this is definitely real life. We're getting spam calls constantly on our new phone number. Poor woman who had this number before us, because we're getting calls like 30 times a day. I just hang up right away. Okay, so I'm bringing this through. <laughs> Here we go, and there is the final effect. Now, even though I said that these 10 second eyeshadows by Kosas have a uh, great color range, and they do, so many fun colors to play with, there isn't one that's like a pure kind of white pearl, so just to enhance my brow bone, I'm going to use my ring finger and use a touch more of this Natasha, this Natasha Denona highlight to just bring it up to the brow bone and blend everything out. Just like so. More mine in seconds. And these stay in place all day. No budging, no creasing, no flaking. The formula is formidable. I am so impressed with us. Brilliant creation. Now I'm going to apply a pencil that I've been using a lot lately. It's by MAC and it's the Pro long wear eyeliner in the shade Devotion. Now, I do like to put a little color on my waterline, and this Devotion is kind of a black green. It's very unique in that regard. Notice it's not gonna be a ton of color here, but then I'll go ahead and put it in a new place as well. So I've been taking it lately, whether I wear eyeshadow or not, and just sweeping it right along my upper lash line like this, very smudging like. It's not meant to be like a liquid cat eye, Certainly it's a pencil, but it just creates a great impact. If I want, I can bring it up a little bit, but I'm not even trying to make a tail. I'm just enhancing my upper lash line and giving my eye a bit of color without it being, of course, a pure intense black. Everyone I've been recommending Devotion to is loving it, and my mom recommended it to me. So 
just sharing and happy to share. Get this, I think you'll find you'll love it. Okay, so lashes. Using my Old Faithful by Terry Lash Expert Twist Brush. And lately I've been applying it just as recommended. Usually I go volumizing, then lengthening, but lately I've been going lengthening first. It's so humid that I just want to get a really tight application off the top. And when the brush is at its skinniest, you get a chance to do that. So I've just finished applying the lengthening version. Now I have coil the brush in to make it volumizing. And I'm gonna put just a little bit more of my upper lashes there for some additional impact. Generally when I'm in a hurry, I skip doing the volumizing on my lower lashes because, I don't know if you can relate to this, when you're in a rush and you're doing lower lashes, bad things happen. So I'm just going to put the volumizing up here at the top. And that's really where I want the most fullness anyway. Okay, for lips, I am using the last of my Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk liner. I've gone through so many of these, but it truly is the best way to prep my lips. For everything else, I probably should have sharpened this. I sharpen every couple of days. And this might have been the day to do it. At any rate, I like go around my lips, a slight overline, nothing major, and then I bring it into my lips. That, for me, is the trick because if I do that then my lipstick wears off evenly and I still have some color on my lips so if I forget to reapply or I can't I'm still in good shape. Yes? Are you touching my hair? <laughs> then I have mentioned this on Instagram I can't get enough lately of the Laura Mercier Rouge Essential in Beige into May. It's way darker than my normal shade of nude but there's something about it I think works with my complexion, and it's sold out on the Laura Mercier site, but I did link to it at Nordstrom. I'm guessing other people are having good success with it too. When a single color is sold out, that's usually a good sign. I put a little bit on, not a lot, because it's super pigmented. But you can see it's a different kind of nude. There's something mauvey about it, a little bit brown. It feels fresh. I could leave it like this, but I am going to chop it with a gloss. And the gloss that I'm going to use is the Clay de Peau Radiant Liquid Rouge Shine in the shade Sugar Jelly. So anytime I do a darker nude, I like to kind of counterbalance it with something lighter, more transparent, and brighter. So Sugar Jelly here is a really pretty kind of creamy peachy pink. And I'm just going to put some in the center of my lips like this. Oh, it's transformative. I love this combination together. It is long lasting. It goes with everything. There's just enough neutrality to have it match a variety of makeup looks and it stays in place. The combination of these textures is incredibly long lasting. Now in this process, I have been topping my cheeks lately, almost like a finishing step with this very affordable cult classic. It's the Milani Baked Blush in Luminoso, which has a ton of pigment for this pale shade. I go very lightly using the same brush I'm going to apply to the apples of my cheeks for a really luminous peachy pink glow. Almost a finishing step that just really brightens I wore this all day yesterday to a bunch of events and I kept going like, oh, what blush am I wearing? But then I remember again. It's so good. Because there's a high shimmer element to it, I would suggest going in the first time with a light hand because it's really hard to remove shimmer after it's been applied or over applied. But once you kind of get the hang of it, you'll know how much to put on to get that color payoff and glow without getting too glowy. Now, a couple other notable mentions that have been an equally consistent part of my summer routine, you know, just like switching things in and out, are as follows. I do apply a lot of this Charlotte Tilbury Supermodel Body Shimmer, Slimmer Shimmer Shape Hydrate and Glow. It's a lengthy moniker, but a great product. It comes uh, with a roller applicator, and I focus it typically like on my collarbone here and rub in when I have a shirt where that's going to be necessary to add glow. And I also use it on the tops of my arms and the tops of my legs going down. You do get an ethereal glow that's not too much, and it just does something a little extra to the limbs. So this is always nearby. 
Then another blush, which I've discussed heavily and is a great luxury option here, is the Sisley La Orchidee in Coral. This is my favorite of all of the color options. I think there's three or four. Coral is the one I use the most. You can see I've made a dent in it, but it still looks really pretty in the package. And I apply that to the apples of my cheeks. It has more color payoff than the Luminoso that I just showed you. So when I just want a kind of clean, fresh, almost doll-like pink, healthy glow, this is what I reach for. I'm also using it later this week for a bride. In terms of other foundations, I reach for the Clay de Po Radiant Cream to Powder Foundation is lovely and so good for the summer months. You can see I'm halfway through this 040 shade and it's just a great way to get even coverage. I use my Beauty Blender even though it comes with a sponge and I do have swatches of all shades in this formula on my blog so I'll link to it. But it's a gorgeous just toss in your purse kind of foundation that really keeps your skin well. Another foundation that's more of a just rub on with your hands and go is this Clay CCC Cream. I wear it in warm, medium light. It's a perfect match for my skin. You get glow, you get astonishing coverage for a CCC Cream and great SPF 50 protection. So it's an all-in-one. I'm gonna go take a walk outside. I don't wanna do much else. I reach for this. And then, and I think I've talked to you guys about this recently, is the La Prairie Skin Caviar Foundation Powder. I wear in Honey Beige, and I like wearing it, yes, as a touch-up powder or finishing powder, but more often as a full foundation. This is the best powder foundation for full coverage that I've tried in quite a while. So you can see once again, lots of wear, lots of love. Final two products that I wanted to show you today that have been a part of my routine. This one is the New Face Fix. Now, this can be used on anywhere on the face, but I focus my attention on my orbital region here at night, as well as on my lip area. It brings lift and plump and fullness to the face in the best possible way. I love this tiny, portable version of the New Face, and you need to use it in tandem with the Line Smoothing Serum which is portable as well. Both of these are on my bedside in the morning when Joey comes into bed with us. She loves to kind of like tap these around or that handy and that close. Um, I'm curious if you guys have tried this. I'll try to do a tutorial with it soon. Finally, for hair, I've been using the Rain Cry Conditioning Brush, which has boar bristles. It's super luxurious. It's kind of like an heirloom, hold on to it forever hair brush. That's how it was designed. And it's a conditioning brush because it actually stimulates your natural oils up here to be brought through your strands, almost like a conditioning treatment, just very self-contained within your own head of hair. I'm trying to commit to a 50 strokes a day at night situation. We'll see how well that goes. But it does really make the hair bouncy, silky, and extra conditioned looking. And this is my final look. As I've mentioned step by step along the way, it's easy to achieve. I think it's a reasonable amount of products to work with and everything lasts for the entire day, even in heat and humidity, both of which we're experiencing right now. Whew. Anyway, I truly hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you saw something that you found interesting and I welcome your questions and comments in the box below. So please leave them for me so I can respond. I have more videos in the works and certainly plenty of content on Beauty Professor as well. So take care, have a great rest of your July and summer and don't forget to visit me at Beauty Professor, which can be found at beautyprofessor.com. Take care.